the previous two video lessons, I demonstrated how to create a shell navigation system with tabs and another one using the flyout menu. In this lesson, I want to show you some tips for working with the shell, including adding multiple pages to one tab or one flyout menu item, navigating pages directly, and then also how to add pages that are not part of the flyout or the tab system. I'm back in my flyout demo and we saw the flyout item for the red page it has a shell content item for red page and we're routing it as red page. We're pulling up the local red page XAML file. I also created a maroon page and we're going to add that page here along with another page for a fire brick page that we're going to create virtually here. So there's my code. I added in two more shell contents, one for the maroon page, which exists as a XAML content page, and then my fire brick page, which is just being created here in the code. So we have three items of shell content for this one flat menu of red page. Well, let's take a look at what that does for us. I'm going to navigate to the red page and you'll see that now on the red page, I have a tab bar with the first content item being red page, the second one being my maroon page, and then third is the fire brick page. And I can go back to the flyout. Let's see what happens with the tab pages when we do this. On the tab page demo, I added just two new pages that are virtual red page two and red page three gave them routings of red page two and red page three. Let's take a look at what happens with this. I have my tabs at the bottom and go to the red page. And on the red page, I now get tabs at the top for the red page, red page two and red page three. We might use something like this in either flyout or tab pages when you have maybe a master list and you want to be able to show a detail page for any item in that master list. And of course I can navigate back to the home page. In the flat item for the violet page, in the content page, I added a button with the text of go to yellow and clicked event of go yellow. And the question would be where would we code that go yellow? You might be tempted to code that in the violet page, but of course there is no violet page since we're creating this dynamically. So dynamically, where do you code it? Well, of course, this is in the app shell.xaml, so you code it in the app shell.xaml CS. So in the app shell.xaml.cs, I added a, a event handler for private async void go yellow. And our code here is await, it's an asynchronous method, shell.current.go to sync. And then we pass it the routing with two slashes representing the visual hierarchy stack and then the page we want to navigate to with, within that navigation stack. Let's watch this run. In the flyout, I will navigate to the violet page. On the violet page, we get the go to yellow page button. I click it and we go to the yellow page. Well, what if we want to have a page that's not part of our visual hierarchy, but still can be accessible through the shell navigation? And this might be a settings page or an about page that maybe is infrequently accessed. In my solution, I added a light blue page XAML content page and a white page XAML content page and colored those accordingly, looking very similar to our other pages that we've created. Then in the app shell.xaml.cs, in the constructor, I'm adding two lines to register the routing of those two pages. That'll be outside of our visual hierarchy stack. And so we can use the command routing.registerRoute and then give it a name. And I give it basically the same name as the page, but all lowercase. That should be separate from the page. There's no confusion. And then telling it the type of that particular page, light blue page or type of white page. Within the app shell XAML page, with our violet page, I added two buttons to go to the light blue page and go to the white page. In the events of go light blue and go white, we always already saw the go yellow. So let me go back to the app shell XAML, which where we would code those. And I added these two procedures, one for go light blue and one for go white. And they're both asynchronous methods. Here the command is await shell.current.go to async and specify the name in the routing. Don't use the two slashes because those are represent the visual stack. 
These are not part of that visual stack. If you use the slashes, it'll clear that visual stack and leave you with just the light blue page or just the white page. You'll get an error saying you can't have a global page as the only item in the stack. Well, let's watch this run. I'm gonna go to the flyout menu. Let's go to the violet page. I can go to the light blue page. Navigates there, notice I've lost access to the hamburger icon and the flyout because this is now outside of that flyout, but I do get the arrow to return to the previous page. And now I get the flyout menu back on that page. I can go to the white page and same thing, I can return to the violet page. So that's how we add pages to outside of the visual stack and navigate to them. If you just jumped into this video, you can see all the videos from the .NET My Practicum playlist by clicking on the image in the lower right. And if you'd like to be alerted to future videos I create, you can click my picture in the top right to subscribe to the channel.